Star Wars Acolyte is shedding more light on the breadth of Star Wars, but in the same breadth, it is also breaking a lot of Star Wars. So, what's going on right now? Welcome to Star Wars Uplink. I am really mixed on Star Wars Acolyte. I think it gets a lot right with Star Wars. It feels very Star Wars-esque. It's making me think about it a lot. It's, it's making me really question and dig deeper into my wants and hopes and expectations from Star Wars. But also in the same manner, it's showcasing some of the things that I don't necessarily like about modern Star Wars television. Mostly just the fact that it is not just long movies. Eckhart's Ladder had a great video showcasing uh, some of his thoughts around the, the problem with modern Star Wars TV right now of just being long movies. The, the eight part movie, basically. Instead of two hours and 30 minutes, it's now eight hours or seven or, or six or what have you whatever the the links of episodes ends up being like together each episode doesn't necessarily stand on its own and there's other examples that you can look at where each episode stands up on its own uh, and works really well there's other like basically mini series that work really well as like continuations of the same story overall tv shows are supposed to have an overarching theme or, or guiding force behind the scenes for what is happening on screen but what a lot of star wars is right now is like each individual episode doesn't stand well on its own or really has a satisfying conclusion or learning or any individual piece here but that's besides the point of the topic i want to talk about today uh, i want to go off on this article around um the acolyte from inverse i love inverse uh their logo is great they have really thought-provoking pieces and stories around star wars and even go into some theories around star wars but but the title of it of this article is the acolyte needs to figure out what kind of show it wants to be and i think this is the real problem with modern star wars it's it's not the the woke blah 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 star wars has always been woke and i'm using quotation marks here it's been a political drama since the foundation but the first star wars movies were basically opinion pieces around the Viet Cong and the vietnam war like so star wars has always been political just get that out of the way but the real problem with Star Wars Acolyte is it's trying to do too much in a short amount of time. It is spearheading this idea of the High Republic in live action. It is trying to build out this entire new universe in Star Wars. Not technically its own universe because it's based in the same universe, but this idea and time frame in Star Wars is very unique in the High Republic. It has ways things work that they don't work in the other eras or other time frames. So Star Wars Acolyte, on the one hand, is trying to flesh out the High Republic era. On the other hand, it's trying to flesh out this idea of the Jedi and the Jedi's complicated history and complicated actions throughout the years. Jedi have always been controversial. They are these figures of light, but they also have pieces of corruption through them. Their, their core beliefs have, throughout the decades and the centuries, been corrupted into overreach of power, but still better than the Sith, right? We're still better than the Sith, right? Like, that's kind of the belief of, like, we're good. There's some, there's some things that are kind of controversial, you know, like taking kids from their family and training them into a cult, but, like, ultimately we're the good guys, right? That's another question that the Acolyte is trying to ask. And it's a big, complicated question. On top of a complicated era that we've never seen in live action before, that has never been to this size of audience before. The books are great, books are popular, TV shows are a much broader audience. So you've got the problem of the High Republic era, showcasing that and making it unique. On top of that, you have this idea of let's let's add some depth to the Jedi, make them a little bit controversial, show the cracks in the foundation that we eventually see in the prequel trilogy. So this takes place 100 years before the prequels. On top of that, they're also trying to tell a story about two twins and their struggles of basically being two sides of the same coin. Going from different beliefs, having the same foundation, but wanting to live their truth. Like that's ultimately like the core of that story. 
Oh, but also we're trying to flesh out this background of these characters with some flashbacks. Oh, also we're trying to create this new sect of witches. Oh, and also we're trying to do this. Oh, and also we're trying to add a Wookiee uh, Jedi. Oh, also we're trying to have like, there's a lot tacked onto the show. Star Wars Andor, I think is a great example. Uh, and even the Mandalorian, but I'm, I'm gonna use Star Wars Andor as the, the foundation because it's my favorite Star Wars period. Star Wars Andor has a, a core mission. So let's showcase how the rebellion is made. Let's showcase the effect of war on everyday people that leads them into the actions that we see to build the rebellion, to attack the empire, to start the dominoes falling to where we see them in the original trilogy. That's its goal. Star Wars Acolyte has like five goals. Each character kind of feels like they're only acting on one of those five goals at a single time or multiples like there's not a whole lot of nuance there's a whole lot of like we are going to focus on this now and then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna focus on this now and then we're gonna go over here and we're gonna focus on this now there's no core theme there's no like oh hey we're gonna talk about the duality of, of siblings and wanting to live your own truth while another person might have a different truth. That, that's not what they're trying to accomplish here. They're trying too many things in one show. I have some problems with episode three. A lot of it is like the filmmaking. They're using a lot of uh, what's called deep focus where they, they uh, step down the f-stop so more uh, less light can get in, but more of the actual characters and scenes are in focus. So that's why it kind of looks a little weird. Lighting is also a struggle with the show. Like the visual language of the show is is also messy. Um, but this is this is kind of like the problem around the acolyte. You have great ideas with a little bit tougher execution. This does not look like a hundred eighty million dollar show. This looks like a, a CW show in some scenes, and other scenes is like, man, that looks really pretty. So it's really complicated. But episode three really enjoyed it have some criticisms of course um nothing's perfect even like andor i have i have some gripes around andor uh, not as many as this but every show has something to gain and something to learn and something to to kind of improve on there's a little bit more chunkiness in um star wars the act line episodes one and two i think really clearly showcased this and then the the flashback was like okay this could be interesting the first two episodes weren't what the first two episodes were this is a cool look that sets up the foundation of some of the characters. I just don't know if we're going to see the fruition of the efforts of these characters in a um, satisfying way, really. So there's a lot to learn with Star Wars Acolyte. There's a lot to love. There's a lot to hate. There's a lot to just be like, scratch your head and look at me like, what the heck is going on here? So yeah. I think the problem with a lot of Star Wars shows, but The Mandalorian was a, a father-son role, or father-child role, around um, this this learning to love, learning to, to realize the, the struggles and controversies of your upbringing, to move into the future. That's, that's the core piece. Endor is showcasing real people in a real war and how that affects them, and that is the core thing. Book of Boba Fett didn't have a core reason to exist. It was also really messy. Obi-Wan Kenobi, the show, didn't have a core reason. It was just like, we need an Obi-Wan show. What does that look like? I don't know. Let's throw Leia in there. Okay. I love Leia in that show. Great acting. Really love the character and the portrayal. But showcases some of the, the struggles with Star Wars in the modern age. So those are my thoughts. would love to hear your thoughts around the, the clunkiness of Star Wars Acolyte, as well as some of the, the joys of Star Wars Acolyte. Let me know in the comments below. Check out our podcast, and may the Force be with you.